On today's show, Phoenix is going against the X-Men. Speaking of scary things, someone on this panel is going to attempt to sing music from A Star is Born. And speaking of singing, it's a wonderful day in my name. Is it wonderful or beautiful? Beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful, baby. A now it's beautiful a day for a neighbor. Wonderful day here at Collider Movie Talk. Welcome to Movie Talk, everybody. That's Jeff. That's Mark. I am also named Mark, and we have a whole bevy of news stories to get to today. Excited you're joining us for our last show of the week here on Thursday, and we kick off with a big trailer that debuted last night on the James Corden show. That would be X-Men Dark Phoenix. We've been waiting for this movie a long time. We saw some images a while ago. There's been some delays, some reshoots, all those scary buzzwords you hear and you wonder what the hell is happening with this project. Well, I'll tell you, it opens February 14th next year, Valentine's Day. And I honestly can't think of a worse movie to take a date to than next Men Dark Phoenix. That doesn't mean it looks like a bad movie. I actually think this trailer had some cool vibes and it looks like a typical X-Men movie where I'm intrigued. I want to see what's going on with the mutants that we so dearly love. And the performance of Sophie Turner is what I was most turning my eye to because I feel like not just her, but a number of the cast in the last movie. Eh, it's, it, it, did you really care all that much about being in an X-Men movie? I'm looking at you, Jennifer Lawrence. Seems like everybody came to play for director Simon Kinberg. So I'm on board with the trailer as of right now. Yes, I've heard all the rumblings about is there trouble? Has this been delayed because of they're just waiting for the Disney takeover? I personally don't think that's necessarily the case. I'm intrigued. How about you, Mark Riley? I, I really like this trailer. I do not. The internet is a funny place. And uh, they. It looked, it looked pretty positive. See, hey. I saw nothing but negativity. Okay. I, I saw people saying this just looks like a remake to The Last Stand, which I, I could see shades of that, but I also see better direction. And I know Simon Kinberg is, might be an untested director, but we'll see. People have been standing behind him. I, I, I liked the shots, I liked the music choice, I liked what they were showing me. This is the first I've seen of it. So for a trailer, I thought it was pretty good. I want to see this movie, and and to your point, yeah, Sophie Turner looks amazing. I, I am very, very excited for this. This is a this is a storyline from the comics that people have demanding a do-over since The Last Stand. And right now, at least for the first look at it, I'm in. February 14th is a fantastic date night for this movie. I'm going to take my fiance. We are going to go and enjoy it. Probably not, though, actually, now that I'm saying that out loud. She's not going to want to do that. We're probably going to have to do dinner. Anyways. You could do Thursday midnight or like Thursday 10 p.m. and go see yeah. the, the sneak preview of it. And then that way you're fle- late you, you dinner. don't have to worry about Valentine's late, Day. Late dinner. You know what? I'll work it out. I'll work it out. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I'm holding some uh, good thoughts for this. It looks positive for me. Uh, excited. Okay, well, you have a good history of asking your fiance questions and her saying yes when a drone is involved, so maybe fly the drone <laughs> up to her window and say, hey, do you want to go see X-Men Dark Phoenix on Valentine's Day? Jeff, she is that on what that. you and your sweetheart might be doing, and what did you think overall of the trailer? Um, I know what you guys are expecting. You're expecting me to just flip out <laughs> and freak out, but that's not what I'm going to do here. I, too, like the trailer, Mark hey! Riley. You are not alone. I am an X-Men. I consider myself an X-Men fan. I like these movies. Right I have on. not liked the last two with it with this cast i did not like apocalypse i did not care for days of future past we've already covered that on whoa Hailbag. whoa whoa yeah days that's of future right future past is, is uh, awesome it's terrible because they're it's, just holding wolverine's head in her and katie pride's lap for yeah, like and then two they hours. flash back and there's a whole nother movie it was um, me when rfk stadium levitates but yeah. i liked first class and i think that you know if they wrap up this storyline which it sounds like this is it for for this iteration of the cast, right? Unless some of them end up, uh, you know, being brought over to the MCU. Um, I think it looks cool. I think it looks dark. I like, you know, some of the effects and stuff. I like the Dark Phoenix storyline. I'm very curious about Jessica Chastain and, and how she's going to fit into this universe. Um, again, I hear she's playing Miss Sinister. I don't know if that's confirmed or what, but that's what I have heard. That's what yeah. I, 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 I know that you, you reported on that, that that was the rumblings that you heard is that she's playing Sinister. And then contrary to that, we've heard that it's this otherworldly cosmic alien being that isn't necessarily different than Sinister. And some of the powers certainly overlap. Simon Kinberg has said that she's not playing Sinister, but it's somebody that could be equatable to that. So do you see that as being a missed opportunity for hardcore fans? 
fans of the comic book series. I, I don't. I'm not a hardcore fan of the comic book series, so I don't. I can't say whether it's a missed opportunity or not. Uh, I also don't believe anything that anybody says with regards to who's playing what characters and in their big Kim comic book movies. First time director, so this might be the first time he's in this line of fire. When I think it comes he's. To I think he's been through the ringer, having worked on a bunch of, of big movies, and he knows to ob obfuscate and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't. I don't know who she's playing. If she's playing a, a character that is canon or, or a new character uh, or an amalgamation of several characters. But yeah, I'm just saying what I had heard. And this was, of course, was prior to the, the reshoots, which I'm told have been pretty significant. Yeah, the reshoots were significant. And again, we don't know the extent of the reshoots or what the primary purpose of the reshoots was. Was it to accommodate Sophie Turner's Game of Thrones schedule? Was it for something else entirely? I don't think that it was a Disney play necessarily, but I do think when you watch this trailer, one could certainly postulate that this is wrapping up things, as you alluded to, where we're going to put a nice neat bow on the X-Men what this cast has and then let Disney make the decision who do you want to bring from Dark Phoenix over to the MCU or for their own standalone movie because there's no law that says that just because Disney has these characters they have to shoehorn them into the MCU they can continue right. to go on their own X-Men path and have these worlds never converge what do you say about that Mark Riley? Uh, I think it's when Disney buys this and, and, and they move on over they're going to reboot the X-Men and introduce them into the MCU. Yeah, I think you blow it up, right? So you, you yeah. don't bring any of these cast members over. I, I think it's going to blow scratch. it up. I think they're going to want to establish, especially with Kevin Feige at the helm of the MCU that got their hands on Spider-Man. And look what they did with Spider-Man. They rebooted and they put them into the MCU. They're going to do that here as well. I think they want to distance themselves, not in a way of like, PU, those movies were, were terrible. I think they just want to establish their own version of the X-Men now and put it in the MCU. I personally would love to see this cast carry over and appear in the MCU. But then again, they've been running around for many, many years. The MCU has been running around for many, many years. Yeah. Are they just ignoring each other? <laughs> Where were you? Where, it's were, like, you, were you in school? The, 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 it's like Cap's like, guys, Battle of New York could have used your help. <laughs> could have used your help, but you were just a, off there in Connecticut doing your mutant it's thing. It's a different creative team. I, I think yeah. I think you have no choice but to to start from scratch. Yes. Although you know, I am gonna miss this cast. Like I you know, too. I love yeah. I love uh, McAvoy and Fastbender, and and in this trailer specifically, when Fastbender's like, oh, like you know, and uh, Xavier, an, a, another speech, nobody cares. I kind of love that moment. I did too. Yeah. It, the, Xavier's the one that whatever you thought about the trailer, I saw a lot of people unfairly trolling Charles Xavier because. He doesn't come off the best in the trailer because he he he's missed opportunities with Jean Grey. At least it would appear from these two and a half minutes to really show her the good side of the force, so to speak. Oh, right. So are we, are we going to leave this movie saying, "Man, Charles, you blew it," or is this power that she gets because she gets this godlike power and it's very hard to wield it? So once she gets you know, inundated with hellfire, then you have this thing where she's going against some of her X-Men colleagues. Are we going to walk out of this feeling sad, feeling despondent, looking at a lot of our, our heroes are now gone? Is this going to be an Avengers Infinity War situation where we don't know what happened to all these heroes we walked into the movie ready to see? Oh, God. I, I mean, if we're going to end it, I mean, all signs are... I mean, look, they're put, playing a door song, and this is the end. So... Uh, I, I think they're so hinting cover at of the door song the cover the cover you want to do. <laughs> yeah, cover. I get it. Um, <laughs> but I, I think they're, they're, they're hinting at it. Maybe it's going to be a dark ending with a little bit of hope uh, that we can have some tragedy with some of the characters that we love that might not make it past this. And that, you know, they, some of the people that survive walk off into the sunset, nice capper on this X-Men universe. God, the, the more I talk about it is it's kind of sad to think that Fox is going to be losing, the, that, that Fox is no longer going to be. Fox is gone. <laughs> That, that that I mean, it just really, really sunk in right now, live on camera. Yeah, is that, that why they were playing the cover of the door song? Yeah, yeah because yeah. It's actually, it's it's the end for Fox. It, right. It's just a whole new world. Uh, wow, Disney pun there. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Been, you've been so this is so much really synergy good today. So much synergy, <laughs> but it is. It's going to be a whole new world for the the MCU. I think a lot of the fans want to see. The, the mutants joining the Avengers, having a new, new Wolverine that is an Avengers in the comics, uh, having seen those, Fantastic Four, all of that. Um, but with X-Men, it's been their most successful franchise since 2000. And I, I think that you have to acknowledge the history of that, the highs and lows. But overall, I look at all the X-Men movies, and they're some of the best out there. They really are. I mean, you could look at First Class 
I loved Days of Future Past. You can look at X2. X2 you can look great. at Logan. You can look at the Wolverine has its moments. Origins, ooh, okay. Last Stands, ooh, okay. You know, what, what have you. But it's a, very, it's a historical moment for this franchise, and hopefully it goes out with, like, some heartful tragedy, but some hope and something that, you know, you, you can put a bow on and go, that was a good run. Yeah, Jeff, would that be the proper way to send this off, or do you just want everybody to get shredded by the end of this flick? Um, no, I, I, I want some hope. I, I mean, I don't want to see all my, my faves die, yeah. but uh, but yeah, I do think that they need to bring this to, to an end. To and we have New Mutants coming out after this. So it, yeah. New Mutants, which could play in the same sandbox if they wanted it to, but New Mutants also has the reshoot bug. A, a lot of that movie's being reshot. Apparently yeah. they test screened and they want it tonally different. I haven't even settled on a rating yet, so that feels unfortunately like it's going to be a one-off which is a bummer because i really wanted to see what josh boone could do with a franchise like that doesn't appear we're going to get that but disney might like the movie and say hey here you go um let's make more of these now that you're playing in our sandbox <laughs> doubt it but it could happen. if you could have one character in the x-men universe uh, and the actor who plays them like carry over to the mcu who would it be just one are we are we allowed to draft hugh jackman as wolverine no he's done he's dead okay Oh, come on. He's dead. He died this in Logan. Monopoly this, money, right? this is from yeah, Dark right. Phoenix. Okay. Like, would you would you take Evan Peters, Jennifer Lawrence, who wants out, by the way? She, it's not, she's not. No, I, back, I, yeah, I, I think that I'm interested to see what Chastain's character brings to the table uh, oh, going forward. Interesting. I want to see what Sophie Turner is like as Jean Grey. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm I'm betting on the safe play, which is I've seen James McAvoy as Charles Xavier. I know that he's going to look good with a bald dome for a long time, whether it's mm -hmm. this or whatever they happen to do a split going forward. I think that James McAvoy would be the safe play to continue the legacy of X-Men okay. in the world of Disney. What say you, gents? Uh, I would love Fassbender. Okay. I, I know he's quote unquote the villain, uh, the Magneto, but I love his. I, I've always loved his character the most. He's brought something very, like, very complex to that character and is a, a great addition to the character with Ian McKellen's own Magneto. And I love that character because of the way he thinks. He's not, he's not thinking he's a villain, he's thinking he's doing right by his own people. By you know, hey, these it's either uh, it's us or them. The humans are going to come after us. They always are. I think he's a fascinating character, and it would be he'd be great in the MCU. He'd Although it would be fun to see Quicksilver in the MCU, <laughs> but we Quicksilver kinda, would be, wait, but but that, you that, couldn't that, do that, yeah that, yeah. That, that, Jeff, your your draft pick. I, I I go Magneto as well. I just think Fassbender does such a great job with that character. If so. nothing else, he gives a great speech. Yeah. in every movie even people didn't love apocalypse but there's a pretty powerful speech he gives in there so we'll have to see how it all plays out on valentine's day next year and mark riley's in a disney mood so for this next story don't you dare close your eyes it's about halloween oh yeah that's some box office Yo, oh, I love this. because right now it's looking at a scary good 50 million dollar opening week and that's as reported by variety and looking at 45 million is what variety said so i'm going to go ahead and round that up but the outlet is saying that as buzz builds that number could escalate to as much as 55 maybe even 60 million dollars the movie cost 10 million dollars to make so I think they're resting on their laurels and just saying, let's keep riding this train. It's like you're in Vegas and you're feeling good. You're liking the dealer. You're getting the good blackjack cards and you just keep riding the train. That's what Halloween's going to be doing. And I think that this project, I've been known to make some broad claims as far as how much a movie can make at the box office. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. I think Halloween could do 70, 75, 80. I think this thing is going to crush these expectations. Jeff Snyder, I go to you before I go to the horror pumpkin lover, Mark Riley. Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously 50 million would be a huge opening for uh, for this franchise. When you look back at Rob, uh, sorry, Rob Zombies. Uh, Were you going to say Rob Schneider? Yes. <laughs> Rob Schneider. <laughs> wasn't Rob Schneider Rob who made that. Schneider is Rob Michael Zombie. Myers. I was thinking Zack Snyder. Who knows? Uh, to the 2007 version opened to 26 million. Yeah. So I think that is sort of the the floor for for this new one, which you know comes with Blumhouse and and Danny McBride and David Gordon Green that that kind of thing. Plus Jamie Lee Curtis is, is back. Yep. Um, I don't know. I, I think that I'm with you that this movie could could do over 50. I don't know if it'll go 75, 80. I think that's a little high. Uh, the Nun opened to 53, and to me, Halloween is just much bigger as a brand than The Nun. But I understand that The Nun has the Conjuring franchise movie, which are much more recent. You know, um, so I'm gonna put Halloween opening. I'm gonna put it higher than 50. 
I'm going to go uh, in honor of 666, 66 million. That's a, that, that's a good number. and That's a solid uh, defeat of the Nun, which Jeff brings up the Nun. Very successful. Not a lot coming out around that time as you get closer to Halloween. There's going to be more options to go see the theater, but not just the name brand Halloween, Riley. It's the way that this has been brought back. It's the acclaim that it's already getting out of film festivals. I think this movie is going to demolish. You do not disagree. I, I don't disagree. I, I'm going up too. I'm, I'm with you. I think 70, between 72 and 75 million is what we're looking at. I go back to, yes, The Nun, and it has The Conjuring kind of tagged to it, but there wasn't any real big star power in that. That was just the, you know, not to, to discredit anybody in that movie, but that had a nice release date setting off the, right. the horror season. So people are, you look at that, they're hungry for it. Then you factor in Jamie Lee Curtis. You factor in the name brand of Halloween. You factor in it did premiere at a prestigious film festival. 85% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. The Nun is at 23%. Exactly. So. Damn go, good trailers. Damn yep. good trailers. Good campaign. Buzz coming out of not only Comic-Con where there are a lot of uh, sweaty horror nerds out there, we had TIFF, the good reviews, word of mouth is spreading. There's an EW spread happening right now. Th this thing, and I think about last year, it, it shocks people by opening over 100 million for it, which I wouldn't even have fathomed at it's the in time. Play. It's it, a good it, point. I, I think triple figures is definitely in I play. I think it's I'm in play. I'm not going to laugh anybody out of the room. No, I think it's in play, but I'm, I'm being a little bit uh, reserved on it. But so maybe 75. I'm, I'll, I'll land at 75. I'll just put it there. So and I you're think both going go 75 no, and I'm, I'm going I'll the low? Go 76. A one dollar. I can't believe $1. I'm the low at sixty six. All right, million, I'm going eighty million. I don't think this makes triple digits just because uh, you know there's there's only there's What's a ceiling. What's it opening up against? Uh, it opens on October nineteenth. While Jeff talks, I'll I look it. it up. Yeah, uh, there's just a, a ceiling for slasher movies. I don't think of it as a slasher movie. Yeah, I think that I, in courted a sort of broader audience. You're right. You're right on that. Um, but but you're right. You know, t Jamie Lee Curtis uh, coming back. The fact that this is a direct sequel to the original. The fact that it's opening in October, close to Halloween, when people want to go to the movies to see horror movies. Exactly, and, big. and the name Halloween, the music, like do, 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 the music is enough to get, I think, get people out of the, the house to go and see. Like, I want to hear, I want to, I want a Halloween. It's, it's night. really well Absolutely. done. I want a and horror movie night, date night, it, and that's Bring, the movie like, you're going to go see because yes. it's opening against "Can You Ever Forgive Me," which is Melissa McCarthy, right. and I think a worthy Oscar campaign Great. for her. Prestigious film, uh, you know, yeah, totally different movie. Um, yeah. First Man and Bad Times of the Royale Out opened the week before. Okay, um, so you're going to have some crossover there, but I, 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 with Bad Times, but I think this is the movie to go see to celebrate Halloween because the movie's called Halloween. I mean, it's it's as much name brand synergy with the release date as you can get other than a movie called Friday the, the 13th opening on a Friday the 13th. All right. Um, the, 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 okay. When I went opening night to it, I had already seen it in the, the press screening, and I went opening night, and I, I went, something something's happening right now. People were dressed up <laughs> as Pennywise or carrying around balloons. They had hats that said SS Georgie. And I'm like, this is, a, this is a thing. They made events out of it. Now you, you factor in the name of Halloween. You factor in the holiday. You factor in it's a great date night. People could dress up as Michael Myers. I probably don't recommend it in theaters. That might scare people. Um, but I think I'm going to go even higher. I'm going to go higher. <laughs> I'm going to go... 90 million. You're my favorite wow. panelist that yeah. talks himself into new points. Nine no, I just think, I just, yeah, because I, th <laughs> I think that there, there is a movement happening. There's so many things that you could factor right, into this. Right. And the, the fact that it is Halloween and that it's a resurgence of horror right now. You have the granddaddy of this them all. Is, it's a great release date. Uh, it has not, yeah, no real competition because can you ever forgive me in mid nineties? Th those may even be platform releases. I don't even know if those are actually going wide the following weekend. It takes on Hunter killer, you know, a Jerry Butler movie. Like that's the only real competition. It has a Johnny English movie. Get, I don't get see here. a big box it's office own, drop second week. Yeah. Two, two, two weekends in a row. Cause normally uh, horror drops off huge after the first week. I think uh, coming, you know, it comes out the 19th. It's also going to play that 20, the 26th, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. So in terms of Jeopardy, Halloween, what is a cultural hit smash? Well, I mean, cultural, yeah, it probably, yeah. it's going to get in the zeitgeist, right? It, it already is. You would think it would? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. think I think Michael Myers gonna get up and there. Laurie Strode are already in there in the iconography of the, the mask. And I everything. watched the 1978 version uh, recently, and it's a, it's a damn good movie. I, I can't consider it the greatest horror movie of all time. Sorry, Mark Riley. But the breathing 
I forgot about the breathing. The hearing the breathing in the mask because every kid did when you got a mask and you're excited about it. Oh, yeah. And then your third house is when you start to sweat and you're like, oh God, this, this is was a be, mistake. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a tough one to negotiate. How bad do I want that next Kit Kat? Well, we're gonna remind you guys that our own Josh McCook, speaking of Jeopardy, he has a Jeopardy sizzle really. He's campaigning to be the next host of Jeopardy when Alex Trebek says goodnight for the last time in 2020. You can check out his sizzle reel on Collider Quick. We also have Collider Games, Collider Sports, and this here Collider video. We we also have a Twitch channel, and we're going to be doing Jackbox games again tomorrow. That's going to start at 11 a.m. 2 p.m. on the East Coast. Jackbox Party Pack 2 is where we're going to be playing. So join us on twitch.tv slash Collider. And if you want to go see a free movie, get a cool screening, you can join us at the Sherman Oaks location of Arclight on October 2nd. Our own Stephen Frosty Weintraub is going to be hosting a special screening and then a Q&A with some of the talent afterwards of I Still See You. If you want to go, you're going to be in the Southern California area on October 2nd. Just send us an email at thecollidermailbox at gmail.com with a subject line, I want to see I Still See You before it's in theaters. I know it's a lot to ask. You can go to thecollider.com, post and cut and paste if you want to put in the subject line. I don't know if they're going to be Nazis about apostrophes or if you have to say it exactly right, but <laughs> just make sure you get it right, and then you are going to be in the seat for that and the Q&A afterwards. All right, our next story is music. Maybe oh. not scores and soundtracks based, but it is a musical. Thank God. It's well, going to be a hit one, one that could reap a number of Oscars, and that is A Star is Born. Had music released from it today. Early festival reviews for A Star is Born, as Jeff and I were lucky enough to see it in Toronto, say that it's a front contender for Best Picture. And when you hear the music, I think you'll agree there's going to be performances based on A Star is Born music at the Oscars ceremony. So Lady Gaga released a little bit on Twitter, and then they also just have Shallow is released as the first single from the soundtrack and the way that it works with the Oscars is that you can have up to two songs from one movie be nominated. So I've seen a star was born. The music's great throughout, but them releasing shallow up top means that this is probably the song that they're putting their money behind as far as campaigning to get nominated. Jeff, you've seen the movie. Is this the right song to campaign for the Oscar? Absolutely. This is a fantastic song. I am Gaga for Gaga, baby. It's Gaga ah, day. Yeah. I know this, this, Waiting on that one. this single only got released Nailed today, it. but I've been singing this song for the last week or two in the Collider office, much to uh, John Roca's hurt ears. You want to give us a um, few bars right now? I'm falling in all the good times i find myself longing for a change how is this guy not found a room i know really i'm the next gaga it's like you guys are here with her do you know there's uh, uh auditions for the next season of american idol oh my god coming up um, i think you get it right at the age right we're there. gonna have a collider sing along believe me when the whole soundtrack comes out uh so much better than great and you'll probably be singing it on oscar night because i i, I can't I, I, look, anything can happen between <laughs> now and then, but this has got to be considered the front runner for, for best actually song? winning best I, song. I so. You're going to see the performance at the Oscars winning. It's got pretty good odds. It might be some of the best can odds. Can take in down terms Black Panther, Mark? Category. Take down. Take can down. I take down that the original like Kendrick Lamar song from Black Panther? Oh, it's it's that's, that's it's, a big one. When right? you look at yeah, the, the lineage right. of the year, it's it's pretty tough. It's gonna be tough. You, know, you bring really that up, good. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Mark Riley, mm. uh, who does a better rendition, Snyder or Lady <laughs> Gaga? And where do you see this song landing? Uh, well, Lady Gaga does a much better job um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i right answer. you know the um the song that really got me was the one she shared on her twitter and that little video that little one minute video i was telling snyder off Sing air it for us which i, I, I have no idea uh, like again it was the first time i've heard both of these songs uh so i can't even remember but i will say that the emotion was overwhelming with i i don't know what it was i it, maybe it's the performances the way that it was cut the song itself all of those factors, hearing the great buzz, I teared up, man. I'm off like, the deep end. I was like, there it is. Watch as I die. Uh, we'll, we'll watch, and we might have to. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to edit this off. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, kill the stream. How was that? I can't. You stick a microphone yeah. in front Podcast of me. This is what happens. It, it, it was, it's phenomenal. I mean, everything I'm seeing, like, and the, the performance, like, it ends with. With Bradley Cooper going, hey, I just wanted to see you one just more time. I want to look at you one more time. One more time. Girl. And I was just like, 
<laughs> he, he loves her. Did you see that the the uh, Ellen parody video of that? Where it's no, like, uh, yeah, I'm it's, sure it's, it's great. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I did not catch that yet, but what I did catch is the full movie. And I think every time you uh, hear a song in that movie or you see a performance, you're probably going to have the reaction that Mark Riley had. It's yeah. uh, it's a really good movie. It's it's yeah, and and the, really and the, then I watched the video, and the, and the the song is phenomenal. I love the video. I think that it, you're, to your point, Ellis. Yes, I think they're putting that out there now to show this is the song we're going to get behind for the Academy Award. Um, maybe there's some other ones you, that you're going to sing later. I'm sure. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing all the nominees. So I just I can't. I really can't wait to see this movie. Talk about. I'm going to take my fiance to that one and say, don't worry about X Men: Dark Phoenix. We'll 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 go to this one date night. Valentine's Day. I think we damned. should all. I think we should all bring dates and go have like a big collider. I would love mass. that to go see a Star is Born. Yes, I okay. think so. And When's like it two, come out? Uh, <laughs> next week, actually. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can line that up that quick. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've already seen the movie, so if I can go stag, you I'll got that see app though, there. right? You can. Uh, I don't know. That's, I'll, I'll, I'll make some calls. Okay, I'll, good. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll do some swiping and I'll see. Just see, I'll yeah. see what you're comes the real up. star, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Check out the Raya profile. Okay, we move on to our next story, and I do have uh, Jeff for and his singing to thank because once he started singing, everybody forgot about the fact that I totally butchered the lyrics to Mr. Rogers' classic song. So he sings, "It's a beautiful day." I went wonderful. It's the same thing. I didn't grow up watching it's Mr. Rogers. I was aware day. of him, and I was aware of him enough to where when I see this first image released of Tom Hanks as the iconic Fred Rogers. I, I kind of want to see this movie now. And it's based on a, a journalist meeting Fred Rogers for the first time. Cynical journalist meeting him and being won over and having his his world outlook, his, his life goals change as a result of meeting Mr. Rogers. So while you may look at a Mr. Rogers film based on his life and as an accompaniment to the documentary that came out was a smash hit, you may say, oh, are they going to get the dirt on Mr. Rogers? No, I don't know if there is any dirt, but I think this is going to just glorify him further in the eyes of so many people, multiple generations who grew up loving Mr. Rogers, Mark Riley, this image, Tom Hanks, he's already done iconic roles, and I'm looking at Walt Disney's direction. I don't know if Mr. Rogers is frozen, but he certainly looks like he's been recaptured by Mr. Hanks. It's Tom Hanks. God, I love this. This image, I'm like, yep, there's Mr. Rogers. I can't wait to see this. I, I, I've forgotten that he's doing this biopic. I completely forgot until I got an email that said, here's your first look at Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. And I'm coming off of a pretty good, uh, I just watched uh, Will You Be My Neighbor again for the second time. Uh, cried my eyes out for the second time and just watching him like somebody asking him like in this raw footage that shows in the documentary of like what what's the deal you just love children and he's just so earnest in his in the way mr rogers talks i i can just picture him doing this such justice question is are we going to get an oscar nom for tom hanks on this well it comes out in its position right now you know it comes out october 18th 2019 yeah, so a there little it more is. than a year away uh, prime positioning if tom hanks can pull it off i don't know about this plucky newcomer tom hanks but i certainly know that him <laughs> playing mr rogers could lend itself to that academy award-winning weight jeff uh, this is obviously perfect casting. The, the yep. question is whether it is a few years too late. Okay. Should we have gotten Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers a few years ago? Because now, you know, we just saw the Mr. Rogers documentary, which is incredible. Mm. So I just don't know how Tom Hanks as good as and amazing as he is. I don't know how he compares with the real thing. And I point to something like um, the walk that Joseph Gordon Levitt's a Mecca's movie. Uh, you know, like, really like, great I point. like the, I the, like the walk too. The movie. Right. Yeah. man on wire w is a tremendous tremendous documentary. So as good as Joseph Gordon Levitt was, there was just no chance he was ever going to live up to like the real Philippe Petit in that film. So that's what I worry is the, the, the fear here. Did people who grew up knowing who Philippe Petit was know him as well and know his face as well as Mr. Of course Rogers. not, which which is another obstacle here. It's it's, a, it's an obstacle just knowing that it's Tom Hanks because a lot of people will look at him and, and think that's Tom Hanks dressed up as Mr. Rogers. It's not Mr. Rogers. Did you, you know what feel I mean? that because I, I, I was concerned about that when I came mm -hmm. into uh, Saving Mr. Banks and I was like, is this just going to be Tom Hanks hanging out with Emma Thompson? It turned out to 
I bought him as Walt Disney. I mean, of course. You're aware it's Tom Hanks. Did you feel like he disappeared into that role? I thought he was great in that movie, but like I didn't necessarily buy him uh, in the post uh, as that as that Washington really? Post editor. Okay. Um, so uh, Tom Hanks, it's been 20 years since he was nominated for an Oscar. He keeps getting snubbed over and over. Captain Phillips, I don't know how you don't get a, a nomination for Captain Phillips. That's yep, insane to me. Um, Captain so, Phillips too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, so or Sully. Oh, no, no, no. Ne- I thought both Sully, of them. Sully and Captain, and Captain Phillips. Phillips. He didn't get one for either of them. Yes, exactly. Um, and I thought he was perfect casting for Sully. This is even more perfect. It's just inevitably I'm going to compare it to the documentaries. So that may be tough. Well, you got a year to let the documentary yeah. fizzle in the back of your brain. So we could see Tom Hanks. I don't know if it'll be nominated great. or not. But I want to hear from you all. Do you guys want to see this Tom Hanks version of Mr. Rogers? Is it a movie you're looking forward to next year? Did you see the documentary? Is there any way this will stack up to that in terms of quality? or amount of tears shed. Let me hear from all y'all on all these stories or anything else you have in the world of movies on your mind. Let us know via Twitter. We're going to take your live Twitter questions at the end of this here show at Collider Video. Use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk. One more story to get to, and that would be Clint Eastwood has a new movie that he's starring in. He's he's making the movie, but he's also starring in it. has been a while since that happened, and it's called The Mule, and Variety is reporting that it's going to open this year on December 14th. Not sure if it's positioning to be an Oscar movie or it's just that's where they find this movie should be landing regardless of award consideration, but it's got award-worthy names in it where Clint Eastwood is playing an aged man who doesn't have a lot to do and so he just gets caught up. Uh, is he's, he's facing for a closure of his business and he gets offered a job as a drug courier for the Mexican cartel and so you got to take that opportunity when it comes knocking on your door, right? Well, not so fast because now there's a DEA agent looking into him played by Bradley Cooper. So interesting movie. I mean, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. The film also stars Diane Weiss and Michael Pena. So opening December 14th, Jeff, what can we expect from Clint Eastwood's The Mule? I think it's it's like the variety notes because uh, I know you know the reporter over there who, who wrote this. I know who he tends to chat with at Warner Brothers. So if they're sort of certainly in his ear whispering that this is a more of a commercial play, then I, I'm inclined to believe them. Um, I'm not sure that this will be a, a big awards contender because I don't think that they want anything to interfere with the Star Is Born at this point. Mm-hmm. But I, I can see how because Bradley Cooper is going to be blowing up uh, you know in October and and obviously November uh, you know as the film plays and, and um, you know more people see it why not release another Bradley Cooper movie in December hit him like right on the heels of that one you know while his popularity is sort of sky high that that's how I'm sort of looking at this I don't know why they felt the need to program this in December because they do have Aquaman coming out so Aquaman. it seems like they're well positioned for December but obviously this is a completely different audience than, than Aquaman and you know maybe it it lucks its way into some nominations, whether it's for Clint or Bradley. I wonder if it might just be Warner Brothers being like, look, we have this amount of cash to spend that we allot it in our in our PA budget, you know, press advertising, all that stuff for movies, and they're like, we gotta spend it by the end of the year, so let's spend it on this movie so we can start out 2019 with a clean slate, because that does happen. Studios have to have those conversations towards the end of the fiscal year. And when you look at January, I think that's a better opening ground. I understand on the heels of an Oscar potential nomination or getting that kind of a claim, but Bradley Cooper's open movies very well in January with American Sniper, too. So, Mark Riley, is this the right play for The Mule? I, I, I'm just shocked. Wasn't he filming it this year? And then he get, he gets it done. Um, I think that he is positioning this for to counter-program against Aquaman, like you kind of referenced, Jeff. I think that it's a smart move. Uh, and I'm wondering, I don't know a lot about it, but just from the premise... Maybe this is a Clint Eastwood best actor nomination kind of thing. It'd be very fun to see him do that. So, I don't know. Um, I'm excited to see it. It's a good role for him. I mean, it's he's a great playing role an old man who, who ended up becoming a, a drug courier. I, I think that, that he's going to have to do some digging and, and, and do a great performance. And like we all know, Clint Eastwood could do. So, I, I'm excited that it's coming out in December. You have all these options. Here's what I'm thinking. I mean, when you look back at his last film, which was 1517 to Paris, that came out in February. Didn't do that great and obviously hasn't been in the awards conversation. Maybe it is as simple as Clint Eastwood carries a lot of weight on that Warner Brothers lot. He's a legend there. He didn't like how, you know, his last film was handled and the rollout of it and just said, you know, I want to be in, a, in award season. Yeah, well, Could be as simple as that. I think it sounds like an interesting movie. So December 14th, I will be there. Will I have a date by then? It- 
we'll wait to see TV. how that all plays out. But <laughs> uh, in the meantime, before we go to live Twitter questions, we have a little piece of breaking news courtesy of Variety's Justin Kroll, who tweeted that Ewan McGregor and Charlotte Copley are actors that they're looking at right now to be the villainous Black Mask in the new Birds of Prey movie. We've gotten a number of casting rumors last week and then announcements this week. Riley, Jeff Snyder, Charlotte Copley, Ewan McGregor, pretty good choices, pretty good actors of note for Black Mask. Yeah, I mean, I don't know a lot about the the actual villain. I mean, I've heard about it um, in the, the Batman lore and, and obviously Birds of Prey. Uh, Charlotte Copley comes off more as a villain because I've seen him do the villain work before. But I, it's Hugh McGregor that I would love to kind of see him step into a villain role, see what he can do with it. He's I still just, lugging around Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, he's like still this. lugging around Winnie the Pooh and his <laughs> lightsaber going, whoo the hell. However, he is doing another Warner Brothers movie right now in Doctor Sleep. So I don't know if they're going to be able to get him to do the scheduling, but... You know, I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could work it out. Yeah, they're both Warner Brothers projects. That was the big question that I had because I'm not sure what the timeline is for Birds of Prey or Doctor Sleep. Quite frankly, uh, it seems like if they were both going this fall, it would be unlikely. Like, you know, if they well, if, aren't they filming Doctor Sleep right now? I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. And, and I, I know that it's coming out next January. So, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, Birds not of Prey, sure. uh, Doctor Sleep. Not, Doctor Sleep not is also January. set for 2020. Not this. Oh wait, wait. Is it? No, twenty. I'm not sure when, when it's filming. Yeah. I I would like to see you and McGregor. I think he would be great. Um, I think Charlotte is is certainly good villain material, but he can also he may be like too dark. I'm not sure what the what the tone is that they're going for here. Yeah, that's a that's um, a good point. But whoever gets you in sort of comic book movie eligibility. Uh, I think that, that that's a good get. I, I I'm kind of liking Charlotte Copley for this. I I saw Hardcore Henry, and he plays so many different roles in that yeah he's good it's, an old boy in the old yeah movie, i mean he's he, he's a chameleon when it comes to acting even within the context of one movie so I, I don't think i'd complain about either one but we'll keep you all posted as to how that actually plays out before we take your live twitter questions going to remind you all that tomorrow we got a stack day here at collider like i said join the uh, twitch stream for the jackbox games and then we also have tv talk collider games as a podcast and Movie Review Talk, hosted by the one, the only, Scott freaking Mance. That's going to be tomorrow morning. You can watch it live right here on Collider Video. All right, Twitter time. Here we are. Some good mm. ones I've already seen. Going to kick off with Toro at Senior Nerd. Says, if in Space Jam 2, the Monstars once again go to Earth and steal talents from NBA players to go up against LeBron and Looney Tunes, what current five position superstars do you want to see in the sequel? So, Ooh. like, they stole powers from, I believe, Charles Barkley or Muggsy Bogues. I can't remember who actually got their power stolen from them, but what current NBA player should have their power stolen to go up against LeBron and the Looney Tunes? Steph Curry, James Harden, uh, let's say, uh, who else? You, you got some basketball guys what, here. What, yeah, West, I think West, Westbrook's guys. speed and, and just like intensity, Westbrook. like that. You know, I, I think Russell Westbrook. He'd be like the a good villain. That I would go to. Yeah, would he'd you be go like the good, a good villain. <laughs> um, I'd, be, I'd, I'd go first as Harden. I mean, you want that like that physical presence and uh, get down there and slam you want the that beard. thing. You, and the beard is just pure villain to me. Yeah. So. I mean, Steph Curry, the way that he shoots from deep is alien already. I he, think Draymond he, Green would be a fun alien. I think he'd take his teeth into that role. And somebody who has, I'm not sure where he's going to be next year, but he has already gotten into Hollywood. I thought he was pretty funny in Office Christmas Party, is Jimmy Butler. So mm, Jimmy Butler yeah. clearly wants to do movies, and I think Jimmy Butler would be a great choice to have his power stolen by aliens. So not, not the real Jimmy Butler, but I'm not saying steal his powers to aliens up there. I'm sure this is going to hit Mars sometime in 30 years, but just saying. Thing. It'd be fun to watch Jimmy Butler have his powers. I just want Barkley to come back. Can we that get would be young? Can we de-age Charles Barkley? You just gave me a great... It, it, this has to be televised this time, right? The NBA yeah. and TNT team. Yeah. So you get Shaq, you get Ernie, yes. Charles, Kenny. That's what I want to see broadcasting the game. Do it as a broadcast. Don't even do it as a movie. Just do it as a broadcast. Oh, Open, post-game, halftime. That's what we want to see. Perfect. We're writing good movies here today. Okay. Uh, next up is Mario, and he says, if you are the MCU hmm. and you had to cast a new I'm not. Professor X and a new Magneto, so Archoy, McAvoy, Fassbender, they're not allowed to be in the running. Who do you cast as the new ones? I'm going to give you Mario's selections right now. He says that Professor X, he wants to see Brian Cranston. And Ooh. for Magneto, he wants to see Vigo Mortensen. Ooh. I'm liking Mario's game right now. Yeah. Anybody, anybody like want to top yeah, that? I'm thinking. Uh, those are both great. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, obviously he's going more of the, it, it feels like he's choosing more of the like Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen age range with those two picks. So, oh boy, I don't know. I always liked Michael Shannon as a villain, as a Magneto type, but. Can I steal that? That's brilliant. You can have Michael Shannon. Michael sure. Shannon as Magneto is a fantastic choice. I could pick, and I could completely picture the MCU doing that. They always drop these wonderful casting bombs on us where they go, oh yeah, by the way, this is who's Doctor Strange. This is Captain Marvel. Th this is uh, Black Panther. So I could see Michael Shannon as Magneto. Patrick Stewart, or Patrick Stewart, uh, Professor X. God, what do you got, Snyder? I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. You guys have computers. I'm on yeah, the you spot. Yeah, you don't have a computer I, in front of you. I really uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm like looking around here. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Guy's got nobody. Kevin well, Hart as Magneto. Yeah, Kevin I mean, Hart as Magneto. <laughs> Something we already brought up was, was Ewan McGregor, and I think Ewan McGregor be a great professor would X. be a really good Professor X. Yeah. So I'll do Ewan McGregor. I could do Charlotte Copley as Magneto, <laughs> but oh, I, yeah. I would take. Uh, I, I think I'd probably take Michael Shannon, although I think Charlotte could do either role very well. God, and <laughs> Jeff is going to continue to pass. You're just yeah. passing. Man. Natalie Portman is both. Uh, no, that's the physical challenge for Jeff. Okay. Uh, Kristen Ofrio says, who would you recast in the Ed O'Neill and Rick Moranis roles in a Little Giants remake? I'm not going to make them think that hard today, Chris, but I appreciate the question <laughs> oh, and the annexation of Puerto Rico. Uh, I would recast Seth Rogen as R Rick Are Moranis. Are you going to do it? Okay. Seth, Seth Rogen, and then I would do Michael Shannon. Okay. <laughs> just going all Michael would, Shannon. See, I would do Seth Rogen as uh, as the Ed O'Neill role, and for the Rick Moranis role, I would do um, McLovin. McLovin. Yeah, uh, Chris Romance Plast. Yes. Yeah, that's that's right. The do. Rock versus Cena. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's back, everybody. Jeff <laughs> Snyder, shining <laughs> yeah. into the show. Thank you for that. <laughs> Welcome to the show, uh, um, Robert Reynolds at. Uh, says if you could walk around town with your own theme music. What song from a movie soundtrack would you pick? So it's got to be a song that's been used in a film. And when you say the song, you have to cite the film it was in or else it will not be considered eligible. A song or like a score? Like I'll give you a score. It? I'll give you a score. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, come on. Yeah. Superman. Yeah, well, I could either do Superman or, uh, or the, the suite when uh, Luke is about to jump into the Sarlacc pit and he does the... And he gets the lightsaber. Ba -ba -ba -da, da, 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 ba -da, da. And I just walk. Da, 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 da. That would be mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know this isn't actually happening today. I, oh, I, I, I can't th actually grant th you these powers. This is actually things I do. I put on my earbuds. I put on music. And I walk Cal. And I, da, 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 oh, I've done da, that before. Da, da, da. Come on. That, like, this, this is the best. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the Superman theme, pretty good music to close your run to. Yeah, Superman theme, out. of course, is, is always what I'd pick. But I was trying to, you know, go different today. Do you have any song? Do you, do you have any, like, like song from a soundtrack? Uh, yeah, Jude Cole, uh, Back to School from the Rondi Danger filled film back to school okay yeah mine would it's, be, a, it's 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 great yacht rock i hear something mine would be the usual suspects right here oh nice new york's finest from yeah. from that score that i don't actually know if we're legally allowed to uh, do that or else we're gonna get demonetized but i don't know oh you know you guys what? if i were to choose a song it would be uh lindsey buckingham vacation the holiday road <laughs> holiday can road. you imagine just walk, i do that all the time i uh, just walk Right. Yeah, I just Come want on. to be followed around by the usual suspect score. There it is. <laughs> it's, it's very, very different vibes we're getting. From <laughs> yeah, I want to be marking from well, the Ellis, what's yours? Come on. Uh, I mean, I, I could take any number ones that I actually already use as my stage intro music. That would be Panama, which you can take <laughs> I from uh, Superbad. It's featured <laughs> in that. Run with the Devil, seen in Little Nicky, or Jump, most recently listened to and viewed in the Ready smash one. hit Ready Player One. It was also in Sing. Ah. It's also performed in Sing, or at least a version of it was. So that's my music, and nice. we are going to say goodbye. But tweet us your musical selections at Collider Video anytime. We want to know what is your theme music for your actual real living life. And with that, we bid you adieu for today and for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in to Collider Movie Talk. I want to thank my panelists, Jeff, Mark. I am also Mark. Hey, I'll be at the Comedy Store tonight and on Saturday. And we'll see you guys bright and early or at 4 p.m. in the Pacific for Collider Movie Talk on Monday. Let's take them out with some Holiday Road, gentlemen. Holiday Road. Oh, I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in.
here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.